It's about the time. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are doing fine and you like the field trip. And who missed the field trip? No one, right? Anyone missed the field trip? Okay. Which company that we visit? You remember the name of the company? Omsi. Okay, very good. You see the select all process? Yes. MBA. DA. Do they use that? Okay, they use MBA. Do they have both? Do you? Okay, I check with uh, them. The gas that pass and that pass from the filter at the end it get treated by selection process. Okay. Um, any question about the field trip? Okay. No question about field trip. Okay. Let's have some announcement and we finish the gas processing. Okay. This Thursday we do not have class as standard in the city bus. It's not like I cancel it or anything. In the city bus, we don't have it to begin with. Yay! We don't have it to begin with, okay? We have class on next Tuesday, next Thursday, and we will meet again on final exam day, okay? Uh, final exam day is whatever day that the university announced. Uh, I already get several emails about uh, SDS like 1.5, 2.0x time, okay? If you don't come to see me, I will accommodate the time, like uh, 1.5x time and 2.5x time as usual, okay? And, but if you need something more, you have to come to see me. If you want just whatever, I, I get email at like 1.5, 2.0x, we will do that, just that. For the exam, um, who do you want? Yeah. Do you, how do you want it to be? Do you want multiple choice? Yeah. Yeah. Raise, raise your hand for the multiple choice. I don't like multiple choice. I don't like multiple choice. I want those who, like, monkey, take my test. That monkey should get zero. Okay. Or someone who don't know anything about the material should get zero. Random guess should get zero. Yes, sir. No, 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 exam is comprehensive, okay? And if it is multiple choice, it will have to do something so that random guess will be zero, okay? So, like, true or false, if you have true or false, expect the penalty like last time, okay? We may have, yes, sir. No, 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 no. We do whatever we promise on the syllabus. I do my part, you just do your part. I will make sure that, okay, the content of the exam, it will be uh, at least 50% straightforward question. At least 50% straightforward question. What is straightforward question? Straightforward question is, for example, I give you uh, pressure at point one, pressure at point two, ask you to use variable equation and then calculate the flow rate. Basically, in substitute the value into the equation and get the value out. Okay? Plug and sharp, very easy, right? So, your part is write that equation in and know what you need to use. Like in the variable equation, we have to use mine. You have to know how many feet equal to one mine. Okay? Straightforward, another straightforward question is like, okay, uh, I have a composition, like last time, in mass percent, you convert to more percent, and then you co uh, calculate the average, average molecular weight and get the specific gravity. Those kind of things, it is likely to appear, okay? 
there will be at least 50 percent of the question that is straightforward, easy. At least easy for me. Uh, this will be straightforward question. Okay. And there will be just 10% or last question, don't try to do last question first, but last question is to test whether you should get A or A plus or something like that. So don't, don't, don't try that. So we'll be, there will be some difficult question. Majority of it will be easy question. Okay. And so that we don't have to curve it. Okay. We don't have to curve it. We don't curve it if three standard deviation reach 120, for example. Okay? Or like high score is very high, so we, we don't we don't curve it. I like the spread of the distribution of the exam exam one. I'll try to keep it that easy, okay? Yeah. Alright. But easy, you you are allowed to have eight pages of the information, right? Okay. And if it is multiple choice, okay. We will try something so that you cannot copy from each other. Like have like last time. Set A, set B, set C, set D or something. Alright? Uh, anything on that? Dead and time, I'll check it and I think it's on Saturday or Sunday or something. And it's in the afternoon. We will check it and talk about it later. Okay, let's go back to gas treating. Okay. We have learned several things about gas treating from this class and from the gas plant visit. Okay, we mentioned already some of the unit has to be on site, some of the unit cannot be on site. Or like vital units can be on site. Okay, can be at the facility. Uh, <coughs> acid removal unit, uh, whatever process you have, like solid bed, it can be on the facility. Okay. Uh, you have learned all this. At least you need to know what is the process that we use on in oxy gas plant. Do we use direct salt to or false? Okay. Do we use some like some name that I cannot even read? No, right? We, they use this. So you need to remember a little bit from your gas plant visit. Where did we visit? Model 1, model 2, model 3, model 4, or which one? Or oh, there's no model 4. Okay. That easy thing you need to know to prove that you went there. Just that, okay? Alright, uh, we talk about iron sponge, solid bed, monoglacid, sulfatrate. This is solid bed to remove H2S. Your part is to know that they are solid bed, okay? It's not like Physical solvent or chemical solvent. And we have a membrane, and you have seen that in gas plant, right? So that's membrane, and you some of you touch the membrane, right? And last time we stopped at okay, MDA, what is this process for? Uh, what the first one? Okay, Mr. Phone. What is this process for MDEA? What's the main purpose of MDEA? MDEA is MDEA. What is that for? Or oh, this is MDEA. MDEA, what is that for? <coughs> remove water? Is it for remove water? No, remove H2S. Remove H2S, okay. That kind of thing you have to know. Uh, physical solvent. Typically, it's good for high concentration. If you notice, we use selection process in CO2 uh, uh, treating, right? We do CO2 flooding, CO2 go to the gas plant. We have high concentration of H2S, okay? When we have high concentration of H2S, we can use this physical solvent, okay? Uh, and last time we started this, the setup over there in the gas plant, you see they have the flash vessel. They use the solvent to remove acid gas. After they remove it, they flash it, decrease the pressure. When the pressure goes down, CO2 comes out. You have seen that, right? So this part is the recovery of the selector or removal of CO2. Okay. 
The selection process can be set up several ways, depending on how much we want to separate. If we want to separate the acid out to CO2 come out when we reduce the pressure, H2S come out, we need reboiler, need to heat it, okay? And if we want to do both uh, H2S and CO2, we have both flash and heating, okay? So, it selects our process a chemical solvent or physical solvent? Physical solvent, you know that it's too easy. It, in addition, you can write it down, okay? You have eight pages in total, okay, one side, or four pages, both sides. Uh, next, I want to talk about what do we do when we remove H2S. Okay. We don't have H2S in our gas anymore, we can do CO2 flooding. But we, what do we do with that H2S that come out? Any idea? We do something more like this. So that is elemental sulfur, look like a pyramid, right? Okay, number one, Benjamin Bell. Benjamin Bell. Oh, sorry. Alex J. Jessic. Where's Alex? Okay, Alex Jessic, not here. Israel, Thomas Connell. Israel, where's Israel? So what we do with H2S, the option that we have is convert it to elemental sulfur. <coughs> elemental sulfur is not like harmful like H2S, right? So we, we have several processes to do that. In this class, we go over Klaus process, low cap process, okay? The rest, we didn't really go through it, okay? Your part is be able to tell how do we convert H2S to elemental sulfur? Give me the name of two processes. And you tell me, oh, it's Klaus process, okay, our low cap, then we are done. The process is we heat it up. We have H2S coming in, we heat it up, okay? Very hot. This is for high concentration of H2S. So when we have H2S from gas plant, we do further treating to convert it to elemental sulfur, okay? Another process is, so this requires oxygen, and we, we heat it. So the process is where we heat it at 1,000. All right, uh, Klaus process, we need it's good for high concentration of H2S, and we use it like 1,000 Celsius, okay? Basically, we try to do this kind of reaction, okay? There's first stage, second stage, do a couple of reaction and use catalyst. Catalyst can be the sodium oxide, aluminum oxide, okay, that's catalyst. So burn the gas with air in the furnace, and use catalyst to do further conversion. It do several process and at the end we get elemental sulfur. What is the take home message from here? Do I ask you what is that unit? What is this unit? No, no. This is not like, okay, in MDA, DEA, this thing you need to know like, sour gas, sweet gas, lip glycol, lean glycol, you have seen the whole exam, right? I asked about that. But this picture is not about that. It's just so you know that it's a little bit high temperature process. We need quite a lot of energy. And at the end, the product is elemental sulfur. Okay? Yellow product over there. Good? Okay. This is what we do after we remove H2S. We don't we just wet it into the atmosphere, no, we don't just burn it, we convert it further. Low cap process give me the elemental sulfurs to uh, it doesn't need heat, okay? Uh, this process is used um, ion and the whole process is licensed by American, okay? This is a diagram. Uh, 
what do I want you to know from this? It's not about how does it look like or anything. I want you to be aware of the name, okay? Just be aware of the name. That is the name of process, doing what? Because you cannot like really memorize this process, right? But you got to know that, okay, no cat is for low concentration, okay? And it's used to convert H2S to elemental sulfur, okay? All right? Gas weakening. Indro, okay, indro. Physical solvent or chemical solvent require more partial pressure of the feed gas stream for the acid gas weakening process. Correct, okay. I'll read, I'll read. Ion sponge sulfate is the process with the main purpose to remove water or H2S. Uh, H2S. H2S, correct. Uh, who want to be the next? Or maybe we should follow this, right? Oh, uh, where, where, where is uh, Stacy, what, what was your name? We just talked a moment ago that you may have to leave early. Where, where are you? What's your name? Curtis. Curtis, okay. Curtis. <laughs> What's your last name? Stacy. Stacy, yeah, Mr. Stacy. Some of the process for H2S removal is solid bed, chemical solvent, physical solvent. Chemical solvent. Sulfur trade process for H2S removal is chemical solvent? Is it chemical solvent? Solid bed? Solid bed, because chemical solvent we have this M D A D A. Okay. Solid bed sulfur trade process. Right? And so, solid bed sulfur trade process is for like small amount. Okay. This kind of question is a fair question that can appear in the exam. Doesn't need to, but can, okay? Uh, regeneration of chemical solvent requires more energy than that of physical solvent. True or false? We want to do who? Okay, how many right? What's your name, sir? Trevor. Trevor, more true or false? Regeneration of chemical solvent require more energy than that. True. true, correct. Membrane for H2S and CO2 removal operate by filtration technique, where large fluid cannot pass through membrane pore. Next, what's your name? Benjamin. <coughs> true or false? Number five. Okay, next, Doug. True or false? Number five. False. False, okay, correct. This kind of. So it operates by diffusion. It doesn't have. The membrane itself doesn't have half, okay? It's just rich molecule. Small molecule diffuse quick, large molecule diffuse slow, okay? It doesn't have power. It's, uh, it's not passive diffuse, it's not filtration technique. It's not filtration technique, okay? Uh, Slexo, next, JC. <coughs> Slexo is the physical solvent or chemical solvent process? <laughs> Try one more time. Physical solvent, very good. Okay, next, what's your name? Next to JC? Ben again, okay, Ben. One of the product from MEA, BEA, or MEA, ABA process is sulfur element or H2S rich gas, Ben? H2S rich gas? Sulfur element? Sulfur element is not correct. H2S rich gas is correct, okay. You get sulfur element when we, when we get that yellow product. This yellow product comes from Krauss process. You, you have to write down the name if you don't want to memorize. Write down the name, okay? Uh, number eight. What's, what's the name, man? Jasmine. Ja Jasmine. The product from Krauss process is sulfur element or H2S rich gas? Sulfur element? Correct. Low cap or Krauss process require higher partial pressure of acid gas than 
another process. Which one requires more partial pressure? Crowns require more partial pressure, correct. Is this primary amine? What is it? Is it next to no. Is that amine? What's your name? Amine? Is it primary amine? Or secondary amine? Secondary amine. These have two uh, groups, right? Okay. Sweet gas with amine, amine unit is typically dry or wet? Wet. Okay, wet. The first step, we remove acid. We don't want it to be corrosive, okay? If it is corrosive, the pipe after that will get corroded. You agree? So we remove acid first. After it's sweet, it's still wet, it still have water, we have to do dehydration. Okay, in the back, what's your name? Did you change your seat, right? What's your name? Uh, yeah. Leo. Leo. What is number one? Lean gas, rich gas, or lean amine, rich amine, sour gas, sweet gas? Sour, sour, sour. sour gas. What about number two? Sweet gas. Sweet gas. Number three? Rich amine? Rich amine. And number four has to be lean amine. We have, so this green thing uh, is liquid fat, right? We have amine coming out from the bottom, and amine, we heat amine to remove any gas. And we use amine that have no solid, go back. Amine that have no solid is lean amine. Okay? Lean amine go from the top. All right, gas dehydration. The most common process we use. Uh, Mm, glycol contactor. Okay. Use glycol to remove water. We can have some other way to do it. For example, use calcium chloride batch treating. Okay. Calcium chloride batch, batch treating is for a small volume. Okay. Have corrosive brine as a byproduct. So most common is glycol contactor. It can be on the facility. Uh, and it doesn't need to be very tall like in the gas plant. So we can use molecular sieve, okay? Use the adsorption technique, adsorption on the solid particle to make it extremely dry. Okay, the word that we use is called bone dry. We need it to be bone dry before cryogenic process. Typically we want it to be bone dry and in no water before it reach cryogenic process, okay? So dehydration prior to cryogenic recovery uh, of natural gas liquid and helium. All right, molecular sieve is adsorption, AD, adsorption. Physical absorption of glycol. So glycol contactor use absorption process. The difference between AB absorption and AD adsorption add mean it adhere to the surface. Okay. Absorption with B is been it dissolved into the bulk phase. Okay. So your part is either write that down or know in the exam which one is which, which one is resolved dissolved in the bulk phase or which one is adhered to the surface. So molecular sieve it just stay on the surface. I mean adhere to the surface of molecular sieve. That's why we use the A D absorption. Correct? Glycol dehydration, okay. You read this part, okay. Typically we use triethylene glycol, okay. The common one that people use, okay. Um, TEG stands for triethylene glycol. And by now you should know that thing, right? OH, OH, that glycol, okay. Uh, so this chemical study that we asked you to memorize a long time ago, but that's not trying to be quite far, okay. Contact tower is used to increase the surface area. So we have several tray, okay. We have lean glycol and gas stream flow counter correctly. So it flow in a different direction. 
It works similar to uh, acid gas removal tower. The glycol comes from the top. Okay? Glycol absorbs water at low temperature and release at high temperature. So this means when we want to regenerate it, we heat it up. Same way that we do for MBME. When we want to regenerate it, we heat it up. Okay? So we have wet gas coming in. So that wet gas has to be sweet first. Okay? That wet gas coming in, in a scrubber, remove any water, I mean water droplet. So if we operate at higher pressure, is that good? To operate this a little bit higher pressure or low pressure is better? Low pressure is better? Even yeah. high pressure, any water will condense out already and then you can use an inlet scrubber to remove water, right? Even with high pressure, it's condensed out. Even with low pressure, that water will be condensed. Okay? So we will discuss that a little bit. So inlet scrubber, remove any droplet. Then it goes from the bottom. Okay, wet gas. Gas is light, lighter than glycol. Like glycol is liquid phase, right? Glycol go down by gravity, gas go up by buoyancy. Okay, it flow counter currently and it has several tray. So tray increases the surface area. Glycol like to catch water when it is low temperature. So this top tower is lower temperature than another tower. Okay, in the regenerator process. So, lean glycol, lean glycol means 99% pure, no water, not much water in it. Come down here, take all the water out, and it become rich glycol. Rich glycol is glycol with a lot of water. Then we want to regenerate it. Regenerate with I want to use it again. I heat it up, remove any water out. So water vapor come out. This is a steel column on the place where we remove water vapor. Water come out, then we have glycol with no, no water and we can use again. Okay, the gas that goes from top is dry. Good? This process doesn't remove H2S. We have to remove H2S first. Okay. Glycol contractor will remove H2S in addition to water, true or false, you say? False. Too easy, right? I mean, that's too easy. Okay, this is another unit. It show you. Okay, we have glycol contactor and glycol regenerator. Regenerator. It always have reboiler. Reboiler means we heat it up. Okay. Very good. So you know that which where is dry gas come out from that. So dry gas come out from the glycol contactor. Water vapor come out in the regenerator. Okay, tower. Glycol is good because it has high absorption efficiency, very efficient, easy, economic regeneration. It is non-toxic, non-corrosive, okay? No operational problem when used in high concentration. Okay, operational problem like too thick to move, too viscous to move. But glycol doesn't have that. No interaction with hydrocarbon portion of gas. No contamination by acid. Okay, glycol fit all this. Okay, that is why it is very common to use. Okay, so your job is, I have A, B, C, D, which is not the reason to use glycol in the glycol dehydrator. So I copy some of these and I change one and you circle that, okay, or cross that. Okay, we, are, we have several kinds of glycol. We can have ethylene glycol, Diethylene glycol, triethylene glycol. Okay. So triethylene glycol is like higher molecule of weight, bigger molecule. Okay. Low, smaller molecule has high vapor equilibrium with gas. It tends to lose gas phase in contractor. So it escape with gas. It's too light. Okay. So we don't like it that much. DEG has high vapor pressure and low decomposition temperature. It can only be regenerated at that. So if we regenerate it higher temperature than that to make it pure. 
So when we want it here, we try to heat it more, right? It will uh, degrade, okay, De degenerate, and cannot be very pure. TEG can heat uh, at higher temperature, 340 and 400, so it's better. Do I ask you about the temperature where we heat it? No, I don't ask you that. I try to show you why this is the best choice or why it's the most common. Tetra is green glycol, more expensive, okay, but less loss at high gas contact temperature. Okay, it's kind of operate at higher temperature. Of course, bigger molecules can operate at a higher temperature without becoming gas, right? All right, this is where they use it. Triacrylic glycol dehydration process, we have inlet gas coming into glycol contactor at relatively low temperature, lower than regeneration process, okay? So we try to do it at higher pressure, okay, higher pressure. Higher pressure will allow any water to condense. So I put a note here, water content increase as temperature increase, okay? So, oh, this is not about temperature yet. So, <clears throat> We don't operate too low temperature because it will be too viscous. So this is a detail for you to know, all right? Um, so basically, one tower is hot, one tower is cold, colder than the one. Contactor has lower temperature than the regenerator tower. Good? Okay, gas pressure. Okay. This is where I found. Optimum pressure is high, 550, or it can also work less than 200 psig. Okay, so it's 550 to 1200 psig. We don't do like 10, 20, 100, 200. No, they have it higher pressure is better for removing water, and this is the optimum uh, temperature. Okay, uh, this is just for your information. Uh, we are, I think we are done, if you read this part for me, okay? If you want gas to be dry, drier, remove more water, we add more tray. Add more tray means we have more surface area, right? We add more tray. We can increase the recirculation rate, okay? Or we can use the TEG that's more concentrated, okay? Um, and the temperature control, uh, we don't want it to be too hot on the regeneration tower. So steel column that I'm talking about, that steel column is this one, okay? This is steel column. If we have it too hot, we don't just remove water, we remove glycol from the system too. So we don't want that. Um, if water vapor, that come out from the steel column is less than that. So you see the regenerator, the like steel column, the temperature is too not enough. The water vapor that come out can condense back. Okay, this is something to be aware of. Question here, I believe you can do it right. What type of glycol that is typically used in glycol dehydration unit? Try it being glycol. What is the main method for regenerating glycol in glycol degradation unit? Increase temperature. Okay. It's not even with pressure. Glycol dehydration works by absorption of water into its bulk phase. The glycol enter the glycol contactor tower from the top. Is it top? Yes, green and green glycol come from the top. Okay. Good. Um, hopefully you have the exam. And you put one, two, three, four. So this is wet gas, this is in the scrubber, this is glycol contactor, this is the product that come in here that to the flash tank and go to the regenerator is rich glycol, and this is regenerator, regenerator, and this is water vapor. When it go back it is lean glycol, and the thing that comes out from the top is dry gas. 
Make sure you can do this. I think this is the whole example. Okay? Um, or write it down. You have eight pages, right? Or memorize it. Additional question. What, is, what process is used to remove nitrogen? Do we use select salt? What is select salt? We separate carbon dioxide and H2S, right? So it's not select salt. TET absorption, ion sponge. This is for remove acid, right? Ion sponge. Molecular sieve, cryogenic process. It's not the cryogenic process. That when we cool it down a lot, then we can remove nitrogen. You remember the cold box that they're talking about in the in the gas plant presentation? They have a tower and they said they use cryogenic process. That is to remove uh, nitrogen, cryogenic process. Cryogenic process require very cold. We cannot do that very cold on the facility. So on the facility, we cannot remove nitrogen. Uh, between gas dehydration and gas retaining, which process prefers to be done first? In general, sweetening. Okay? We make it sweet first. Generally, which process is not done on the list? We do amenity on the list. We don't do cryogenic. Cryogenic is not done on the list. It needs to be done at the gas plant. This is cryogenic process. Water content is generally accepted by gas pipeline in Texas is about seven. Uh, I think the unit is wrong, millions of times foot, not per day, just like pound per million times we foot. So this is from the very first slide from the gas contract. It's seven pound. Okay? Uh, Canada will be less. Which unit is typically for making bone dry gas for cryogenic process? Which unit is typically used? Okay, I need to word use. Use. What do we use to make it bone dry? More something? Molecular something? Molecular sieve, right? That is to make it bone dry. Okay, we use molecular sieve. Last. It's not for high volume, but it's for very, very dry. That's molecular acid. Molecular acid dehydration is adsorption process. Okay. Congratulations, you just get it. Oh, we have more. Okay. Picture A. What is picture A? Selection process. Right? We have CO2 something, so this has to be selection process. What about picture B? Um, this can be, if you don't know anything, okay, this can, it has to tower, and it has to put charge. So this can be like dehydration, tower, or um, what, H2S removal, like NDA, DA removal, tower. D is very obvious, is a, uh, what is D? Membrane, and C is that molecular C. Okay, picture B, I think I have it on the very first slide. Okay. That is uh, acid gas removal, AB unit. So this is a picture of AB unit in Oklahoma. Okay, so if I show you this right now, I show you in the exam again. Now the answer is just one, is AB unit. You cannot say glycol tower in one, let me show you right here. Any question on this gas plant? Okay. The one the slide before? Uh, this is glycol unit. And, uh, additional questions. B text? Where was that additional question slide? It was slide 57 from. Oh, do I hide it from you? Yeah. There's additional question. Yeah. It's not, you don't have access to that? No, we do. I just, what were the answers for the for A and B? A versus A, 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 A is selexol, D is molecular sieve, B is amine unit or amine tower, C, C is molecular sieve, D is uh, membrane. Okay. So just see the picture and answer, it's very, very easy, right? Plus it's multiple choice, I have to do something so that when I get audit, it seems to be like at the level of, like, 
100 uh, pesos. Okay, done. Okay, next. Uh, can you restart it? We do, I think I put that money best flow. The main reason that we teach this instead of flow assurance because I'm going to put it in the exam. Okay? That's why we do this one. Next.